All right, let's start by showing you sort of the features kind of corner by corner. We'll start with the seat corner over here. There's a lot going on in the seat corner. So let's uh, let's just point those out. First thing we have up here, the real obvious thing is the Costco uh, hot water heater. So this has an electric water pump, so it actually, actually will pump water up from the, from the water tank underneath. Here is the electronic ignition, and this creates tremendous heat. Uh, plenty of water to shower. In fact, it also is part of the outdoor shower, which I'll show you a little bit later. So here's the switch to turn on the pump, and then you get your water flowing. So great for washing hands, doing some quick cleanup. Um, down here underneath, I'll pull out the shower head. Yep. Okay, so this is the shower head, and what you would do is you just uh, connect the shower head to the end of the spigot here. So I haven't done this in a little while. All right, so then you can stand out on the porch where you have standing headroom, as we previously mentioned, and shower right here, outdoor shower. Water goes down through the grate. And we also have, and we'll show a little bit later, the uh, uh, guard uh, uh, basically in uh, four walls to add the, to enclose that shower space. So that's really convenient. You can shower even in pretty cold weather with this shower head. I'll set it up here for right now. All right, let's keep looking at what we have over here. All the corners have a light fixture. Uh, and each light fixture has an outlet on it. So we're using most of those outlets. Also have a little shelf here for a few different things. There's a damp dry up there, a magnetic strip, paper towel holder also. This is a nice paper towel holder. It's ratcheting. So the paper towels don't go all spooling out all over the ground. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what's underneath. What we have here is a fold out table. So it gives you, you never have too much countertop space, so that folds out very easily. Again, all stainless, so it's gonna stand the test of time. Now let's uh, show you the cutting board here. So the cutting board was sort of a, a feature that I had to add. I had to have a panel here because of the way the door closes. The door would, um, would, would, would prevent you from opening a, opening a door from there. So it instead folds out and underneath you see we have little supports, so there's one on each side. So that will get you an extra solid cutting board and a little extra counter space as well. Going a little bit lower on the unit. If I scroll up, look down. We've got a pass through here for the trash can. So the trash does smell or whatnot. It's nice and, uh, and contained inside that, that chamber, but you can access it really quickly to dump some things in quickly. Then we have a marine latch here. Uh, it's basically for a boat um, cabinet, but it's lockable, and very secure. So let's go ahead and take a peek inside, show you what's going on inside underneath. So first thing we have a top shelf, which is sort of your Uh, your quick storage, uh, there's little Ziploc bags and food materials. Down below, we have the aforementioned trash can. I'm gonna pull the trash can out of the way. And behind it here, you can see what we have. We have basically a six and a half gallon water tank. And you can see out the top of the water tank is with a line for the, for the, uh, uh, the water uh, pump. So there's the water pump electricity and the water pump water, and it's going up to the uh, hot water heater. So six and a half gallons will definitely last me through the weekend. And we only use that really for shower and washing. And uh, we also have another source for potable water. And you can see the drain there also for the sink and how it just kind of connects th through the wall. It converts from that plastic into, a, into some galvanized pipe. So it's pretty small. This is a 15 inch wide sink. Uh, it's about a 36 inch tall cabinet, I believe. So we're trying to make the most out of it. So you can see the sink basically is the full width of the counter space. We're trying to just make the most out of a very, very small camper. Moving on, got the shelving system. Let me back up. We'll go, go over this corner over here. Okay, a little hard to see. First thing we'll point out, again, 
more um, counter space available there. And so that will pop out. It also kind of acts as the front door on these lower, these lower um, storage areas. So I keep like sheets and extra pillows down there on this side over here. I know it's a little hard to see. I keep my vacuum cleaner. So you can also grab this stuff from that kind of access hole on top of the table or open it up to get the bigger items. So this table comes in nice and handy. It's all almost four feet long. So you're getting a lot of extra table space. You can see there how you can access that same area up on the top. Down here in the bottom corner is a little cutout. So this would be, if you were looking at it from the outside, this would be next to the locker. The locker is located right behind this here, but this part's interior, so you can slide it out. And this is our uh, toilet station. So it's a bucket type toilet. I have found, I've gotten really nice flushable toilets, but nobody wants me to have to clean out the toilet later after they've used it. So everyone likes the bucket toilet the best. And the reason the bucket toilet's nice is you go in a bag and then you um, then you can dispose of it yourself. So people can just toss their own bag in the trash and they don't have to worry about someone else um, going through stuff. So just a little note, this maybe seemed pretty cheap. This is on a three and a half gallon bucket actually, which makes it a little bit lower so it'll fit into my small gap here. Uh, five gallon bucket's just too tall. Some different things you'll see on here. We've got extra toilet paper. We've got the echo gels. Those will solidify uh, urine waste. And then we have the plastic bags. Black plastic bags are always preferred because uh, again, just people don't want you to see their mess. So black bag keeps it a little more discreet. And then also some kitty litter. So if you're using one bag for multiple uses, you can put a little kitty litter over, over the usage and that'll kind of keep the smell down. And so this is all in a nice slide out. Uh, one thing I found is that when you have low and deep storage areas like that, it's very hard to access them without a slide out. You find they're kind of wasted space without the slide out, you get full use out of those little cubby holes. So let's move on to what's on the shelves here. So first thing you see there, that's our potable water. That's a two gallon insulated cooler. Really like it. Uh, it's a Stanley cooler and it's leak proof. I gotta say this thing does not leak and you can see the strong latches on it that hold down the lid. And I've actually also got it strapped to the wall there so it won't tip over even during some transit. So highly recommend that Stanley two gallon uh, cooler. It's a, just a great size and it does not leak. Here's sort of our refrigerator. So again, we're talking about the usage on this camper as being weekend. And what I found for weekend is a cooler works way better than a refrigerator. I can take this into the house, fill it with ice and all my stuff, bring it out here, dump it. We can use it for the weekend. I can take it back in clean it out when we're done with the weekend. That, if that was a refrigerator, I'd have to load all my food and supplies into something else, bring it out to the refrigerator, put it in the refrigerator. Whatever we don't consume has to go back to the house. It's just not convenient. Another thing is uh, I don't need to worry about you know, the time it takes to cool everything off in a refrigerator, running the power to a refrigerator. And I have found this keeps everything as cool as I'd ever want it for, for a weekend. And so you can see it's a nice, this is a, they call it the uh, Coleman party stacker. It just happened to be the right size for my little space here. But then you get your top opening and again with ice packs in there and you can fit really big dishes because it's nice and, and straight walled. Another light there. And also we're also seeing here, I've got a few of these battery powered backup lights. So these just push and so if you're not, uh, for whatever reason you're not um, getting power that can be a way to get light. And then we have a little charger in there. I'm on the Ryobi system. So the lantern we saw outside, the fan in here, right down there, and the vacuum cleaner, those all run on Ryobi batteries. All right, let's show this other feature. It's kind of nice, the bug net for the uh, bug net slash uh, baby gate. So what this is, I'm just pulling it down here. There we go. So that creates a nice screen door. So this door is kind of an unusual size, not quite a size of a, it's bigger than a window, it's smaller than a regular door. I found this baby gate works great. Uh, one thing is it's very strong. So actually when I do have a baby in here, uh, that'll prevent them from getting out uh, while still getting good ventilation from the outside and also I can see them from the outside. 
So the baby gate just kind of clips there at the bottom, covers the whole door and stores in the nice, it's just a perfect fit above the door opening here. So that unlatches it, then I can just retract the gate up and it stores away. Okay, let's keep moving. Let's talk about how the bunks work. So over here we have our mid bunk. So there's three levels of bunks. You have the low bunk, the high bunk, and the mid bunk. All of these will hold a six foot four adult. So the mid bunk kind of has, let's go down and look, look at it. It's actually kind of cantilever here over the edge um, on those same type of folding hinges I've used elsewhere. And the nice, so it's plenty strong as is. I almost never use it. But if you do have someone particularly heavy, I've got some legs that will fold down and really solid that up, that overhang up. So let's take a look there. You can see it's a small space, so you can hear me kind of moving around and bumping into stuff. So but anyway, underneath there, that's a place to store bags and whatnot. You can also store up here in the open shelving space when you have three people. So this bunk is actually really, really long. So it goes into the corner there, and then it goes down underneath here um, about 20 some inches. So it looks small. It's got 25 inches of headroom, which is actually enough that it doesn't feel claustrophobic. And um, you can uh, crawl in there. So I can crawl in there without kind of hitting my back. It's not that awkward to get in and out of. Um, so this actually works really, really well. And then the top bunk, um, these are all exactly the same dimensions. They're 27 inches wide by about 80 inches long or so. So let's move on to the electrical area. You're seeing there our inverter and below the inverter, the green, the green switching box area. That is our generator switch. I'll go in there and get a better view of that. Down here we have our carbon dioxide detector. So right now we're at 460 uh, parts per million CO2. That is really, really good. Uh, that's because the door is open. We're getting good outside air. That's pretty much as low as you'll see it. That's, that's what the outside CO2 is. Uh, it's really safe up to about 2,500 parts per million. So I, uh, I just keep a monitor on that. We don't want to make sure we don't run out of air. It's a small camper again. And you got to think about air. Below that we have our propane detector. And we also have a carbon monoxide detector. Uh, it's not out right now. Uh, we have this. This is the heater here. We actually don't detect any carbon monoxide on that carbon monoxide detector, and it will give me a parts per million readout of carbon monoxide. And we just don't get any reading uh, when we're running this uh, Olympian Wave Three catalytic heater. This catalytic heater is very, very, very efficient. And you can see here. This is the other side of that vent we pointed out on the outside of the tour, right next to the heater, to make sure there's some nice fresh air source. For the heater to burn. This is our battery. So it's obviously inside the area. That's why it's an AGM sealed battery. So we don't have to worry about any off gassing when we're charging that battery. And then we have a microwave. So microwave, I, I'm one of those people that uh, use the microwave a lot. Uh, so we chose a microwave rather than sort of a stove. You wouldn't want to cook in a space this small anyway with, on a stove. Uh, the microwave will only run off of the generator or shore power. It's actually on a separate switch, so you can see it's not even there's not it's not even lighting up right now because right now we're running on the inverter. So let's crawl underneath here, maybe show you what it's like in the electrical space in here. Okay, let's see if I can turn on the light. Okay, so this is a Cobra inverter. This is not an inverter I would recommend, so don't take that as a recommendation. It is it, it, it says 3,000 peak watts. It doesn't do that much. Uh, it's good for about 500 watts. Here's the switch where I can switch it from generator, which will power off of that blue outlet. That's the outlet that goes outside. Uh, it's on normal, which will power off of the battery. Or it can go to off, which will turn everything off. The outlet right next to it is where, and I can plug that in, but it's not going to change anything. But this is the outlet that's only connected to shore power. And you can see the microwave plug is the gray plug. The black plug is that energizer battery charger. So when we're ever on the generator or we're on uh, shore power, that battery charger will, will, will plug in and charge the battery. It'll be plugged in and it'll charge the battery. So that works really, really well, but it doesn't run obviously since that outlet's off. I don't have to worry about 
plugging it and unplugging it um, because when the battery is um, off, that plug is not powered, not a powered plug. And another thing you'll see around the thing is I have USB outlets all over the place. So there's some USB outlets down here. And again, a little shelf for your phone, your glasses, if you're sitting down, if you're sleeping down here. And this is actually a full 27 inches wide, so it may look small, but it's, it's actually plenty of shoulder width. These are some remnants you'll see here from when it was a, um, when it was used as a military um, electronic shelter. So I just left those in there. I didn't see any real need to, to pull everything out. Everything is supported. This can see this all aluminum angle iron supporting the bed. I tried to use as much aluminum as I could to save weight. I didn't want this to become a very heavy channel. And I also didn't want to worry about corrosion. So the, all the hardware is stainless hardware. So you may wonder, if you're looking at this side over here, so why does that channel extend out much further than, um, than, the, than the, the bed is? Well, that's because the bed will actually lift out. You see here, I can actually lift and pull this bed out and convert it into a nearly a full-size bed. And so when you're camping with the wife, I can do that. Or even uh, if the whole family wants to get together, sit down and watch a movie in bed, fold that out and I can, I can do that. So what you would do is you just take the mattress from down below, put it up and you can see this is double decker of wood. So the top piece is what pulls out and the bottom piece stays in place. So that's been really nice. So in this also, it's kind of in a spot where you might think, oh, if I'm sitting on here, it's gonna hurt my back. It really doesn't. That's sort of in the small of the back area. You can even against lean, lean against the wall and you don't, you don't notice that, that short extension. It only comes out about an inch off the wall. All right, let's move on to what's up here. So we have our breaker box here, just two circuits. One circuit's basically the one for the air conditioner. The other one's for the lighting. And then we can see our air conditioner. Nothing too special there. It's plenty, uh, plenty of air conditioning for a space this big, 6,000 BTUs. Again, you're going to see a USB dongle up there. All the lighting is LED lighting, but it's standard, standard lighting, and it's uh, easy to get light bulbs, and they're cheap. Here's our fan. So we didn't get a close look at this at the ceiling, but it can blow in or out. It's very quiet. It's also solar powered. And what we find is if we, you know, if it's fully charged, which when it's out in the sun like right now would be, this would run for about eight hours. Um, and that gets us through the night, gets us good ventilation through the night. Uh, another thing you're gonna see here, I put little um, covers over all these, these uh, skylights. Now you don't, you can obviously pull these out. They pull out real easily. Get the light in if you want it. Also, maybe if you want to black out because the kid's snapping in the daytime, or I find it's great just to just to have a little bit less condensation because you will get some condensation on uh, single pane glass like that um, in the winter time. But uh, just keep a little extra heat in. So try to I try to create a little insulating solution there. I'll show you another thing here. Let's go ahead and show the window here. Okay, all right, so we're on the window. And I have these uh, window, these blackout treatments. So I'll just put it up here. It's Velcro, you can see that. And these work perfectly to get you back blacked out. So actually, actually I have it go on this way. And I'll show you why I do that in a little bit here. So there you go, you got perfect blackout on the window. And then let's say you do want a little ventilation, you're gonna have the window cracked. You can just pull it back and it velcros open a little bit. So those work great, I have one for each side of the, of the camper. And I'm really pleased with, with how lightweight they are, how simple they are to put on. All right, over in this corner we have bug zapping light bulb. So this is just an Amazon light bulb, pull it once, they both go on. Pull it a few times, just the bug zapper goes on. You can also use that as a night light. So, fire extinguisher, I wanted it to be kind of close to the bed. Make sure I could uh, I could reach it at night, which would be the most likely time I would use it. It's a small camper, if I had to get it from outside, it's just a little bit of a reach, maybe one step in the camper to grab it. Um, and then a mirror. I didn't show uh, what was up in this cabinet. 
Uh, the cabinet door opens upwards. Um, in this case, we felt it's close enough to the ceiling that opening upwards um, made sense rather than have it open out as a shelf where it'd be kind of right at your chin level. And in there, you got uh, my electric heater for when we're on shore power again. You've got the coffee maker, some coffee mugs, and some other uh, electrical cording. So that's sort of my coffee storage area. Okay, let's go out and I'll show you how that um, outdoor shower system works. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to put on the vestibule slash the shower curtain. So it's pretty easy to do. Maybe for right now to shut, shut the door so it's a little bit better how I do this. But just got the perfect length of a tarp here. This will create a pretty waterproof barrier when it's all said and done. You can choose to close this side or not. You can leave it open as a walkway. Alright, so that shows that and then uh, can secure it down to the deck so it doesn't blow around too much. Okay, so that's fully installed. So I'll go ahead and show you the, a little bit more up close, but you can see. Now we've got a pretty good seal at the top, a little room for breathability, but really good coverage. That'll block the wind. Uh, if you're blasting the heat inside the camper with the door open, you can kind of heat the vestibule. And this also gives you a little more storage space for shoes and things you don't want to get wet, but you do want right outside the door in the morning or in the middle of the night. So this was a pretty cheap solution to get a little more square footage. And again, it's standing headroom in here really nice so you can just see i'll come on in show off what it looks like on the inside so you see all the aluminum rails and like i said you don't have to run it to run it all the way closed this could be uh you could run this into these into this track so it would take i've got one hand here but what i'm trying to show is that you can actually just pin this back run this into this track here and then you can leave the door wide open for uh, coming and goings. Okay, I think that's a good walkthrough for right now. So again, it's a military camper conversion. Uh, ground clearance is phenomenal. Just to give you an idea, that deck is about 20 inches off the ground right there. Uh, you can remove the deck, put it in the back of the truck for off-roading. But you're looking at probably in the, in the back here, uh, you have 20 inches of clearance, 20 inches of clearance pretty much throughout. So it's actually got more uh, clearance for off-roading than even my truck does by a good bit. And uh, all right, thanks for uh, tuning into the video.